is Casey Ferguson. You are listening to The Casey Ferguson Show. I have actor, musician, and now podcaster Ryan Lambert on the phone. Welcome to the show, Ryan, and welcome to the podcast jungle. How are you enjoying the podcasting experience so far? Thank you for having me, of course. And, uh, yeah, um... Been an interesting venture so far. Adventure, adventure. We're just getting going, really. I mean, we're only on like episode whatever, six, seven, something like that. We kind of been breaking them up into two parts because uh, we tend to, uh, as they say, go long. <laughs> so, um, yeah, because we get in conversations either with each other or if we, have, we have a special guest here and there. And, um, you know, we're just blabbing and we don't really like to edit too much. So, uh, we just kind of let it roll. But, uh, you know, I'm getting my, you know, I'm finding my way, finding my voice. I'm trying, I'm getting there. So it's been fun, though, to say the least. I figured, you know, I was sitting back and I was, I listened to a lot of podcasts. Um, you know, so, uh, unlike, you know, because I do a lot of walking around the city and, uh, you know, I'm on the train a lot. So if I'm not listening to, like, music, I'm listening to a podcast. And I was like, well, fuck, man. Like, they're having all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not throw your hat in the ring? Sure, man. I like to talk. <laughs> You know, people people seem to enjoy it, and you know, and plus, I mean, there is a little bit of an angle for us, and uh, a little bit of an in from our past. You know, I mean, we we have uh, we have definitely got a few things to talk about. This all started because Andre Gower and I were sort of hanging out. And we were we'd have these like long conversations over a beer or something, and we'd be talking, and one of us said like, "This is a podcast. What we're doing right now, we're just talking about the business and what's going on, and what's the state of." what it used to be like, our experiences within that business as children and, and, and what it is now to be an actor, producer, writer, director in Hollywood at, at this time, in this stage in, in, in the world. And uh, we were like, well, I wonder if other people would want to know about this bullshit. So we said, fuck it. So we went out and we got a bunch of equipment and uh, we set it up and we just did one and we had a blast. So then we started uh, getting some guests on here and there and... Uh, we're, uh, we've got some really, really super special guests coming up. Um, crossing my fingers that it actually happens. So uh, within the next uh, couple months, if you tune in, you'll be hearing some uh, familiar voices. I like that you guys, you know, give some advice to people trying to find their way out in L.A. and everything. And, you know, stating a fact that... They don't even have to move there to be successful. I mean, a lot of people here in Canada, we get, oh, we got to move to Toronto or you got to be in Vancouver, this or that. That's fucking bullshit. Like, you can do anything from anywhere. I mean, it does help, you know, when it comes to auditions or, you know, this or that. I mean, I'm not in that industry. I'm, you know, obviously a podcaster and uh, was a musician for a long time. But, I mean, you can live anywhere and tour abroad. It depends on what you want. It depends on what you want to do, first of all. What's your project? far do you want to take it or what level do you want it to be on i mean if you're here in hollywood you know i'm looking out my window right now in hollywood <laughs> the hollywood then you know there's a certain degree a certain level of like well what what is legit compared to you know little little uh, jimmy rotten crotch down in you know idaho <laughs> in like the backwoods whatever somewhere making a YouTube videos and putting them up and then people like completely enjoying them and it took him all of like you know three dollars to you know get a get a microphone or something from the local thrift shop I don't know you know what I'm saying yeah. like and and he just made his own little beautiful project or you know I know a lot of guys that find funding through their friends whether it's Kickstarter or something and make like a little short film and you know they're not Hollywood types they don't really know what they're doing they just have a passion for what it is that uh, they've been a fan of all these years and we finally come to this day and age where it's possible that you can do that and I realized it a long time ago actually because uh, I'm a musician as well and I've been making records since I was like 14 so you know the, the model used to be you wrote songs you rehearsed you played out you played clubs you toured made demo tapes by yourself you know with the four tracks or whatever then you you know, you shopped your demos to record labels, and then they signed you, and then they gave you an advance, and then you did pre-production, and then you got to make a record, and, you know, if you were lucky, then they would release that record. And, and they, if you were even more lucky, they would put some money behind marketing. And then if you were super lucky, they would pay for you on going on tour. Uh, or put you on a bill with someone that was going on tour. And hopefully your record did well, and then you made it, and you were famous. That's how it 
used to be. Then, years later, me and my friends were making some recordings, um, just some demos that we were doing, just some, just uh, we were just demoing up some of our material. And I said, you know what, I'm just going to put up one of these songs on our site right now. I'm just going to put it up right now and uh, just hear how it sounds. All I wanted to do was hear how it sounded through the speakers coming out of the computer, as opposed to like actually putting it in on a CD and putting it in the car or, or listening to it on a stereo system. Just wanted to hear how it sounded coming out of the speakers. Mm-hmm. And I put it up, and about five minutes later, some guy in Germany was like, this is my favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is a new era. Like, we don't need the guy who can sign you for the record. I just put up a song and some guy in Germany loved it. I didn't even mean for that to happen. So, I mean, and that's how it's going with film now, too. You make a film, you put it up yourself, boom. That's how it's happening with uh, writing as well. If you want to write a novel, write fan fiction, whatever you want to do. Boom, Amazon, put it up, bam, you're Fifty Shades of Grey, you're wool, you're, you know what I mean, you're, you're a writer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a whole different world now, and it's exciting, it's a little hard to fathom the idea that anyone with a camera can make movies. I don't know if it's as sacred as it used to be, but if you're good and people enjoy it, fuck it, more power to you. (laughs) Well, why not? Just like the podcaster thing, right? Just get it out there. You got a microphone? You have a podcast, and everyone's got one. So, <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely a lot out there now. A lot out there, a lot of content, and uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know. Everyone, ev- everyone got, everyone has a chance to have a voice. Uh, some are better than others. <laughs> it's just like looking at Facebook all day and going like, this person has absolutely no idea. They have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> facts are facts, and this is not. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway, can I get a fucking amen? Well, uh, I-, I was listening to the show the other night. And- <laughs> a charge out of um, Andre was telling the story in which he was cock blocked by Ralph Macchio. <laughs> That was fucking great, man. I got to charge you. And the funny thing was, he, he told me, he just told me that he was in, uh, I don't know where he was, some other convention or something by himself. And he ran, he ran into Ralph, and uh, I was talking to him for a long time, and I'm like, oh, great, okay. I'm wait-, and, you know, he's telling me the story, and I'm like, and then, and then, oh, and I'm waiting for him to tell me the story of him telling him about Conglaccio. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you didn't tell him the story? And he's like, nah. Like, oh, <laughs> man. Man. <laughs> so now I told him, I said, it's your, now it is your mission to get Ralph on our podcast. And I want him to actually say those words on our podcast, and I'll be a happy man. He's <laughs> <laughs> cock blocked McLovin. Okay, he's our friend. We don't do that. We should be guiding his cock, not balking it. <laughs> I also heard on the show that uh, Michael J. Fox bought you your first beer. MJF, yeah. I was at Kirk Cameron's birthday party. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna steal one of these. And uh, he he was he came up and he was kind of just standing next to me and he said, "Hey kid, how you doing? How you? Hey, hey, he's like, uh, do you want a beer? <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so he just got one and he gave it. He he handed it to me and then he had to go do some speech or something. They made him do like a speech up there. And uh, when he came back, I had finished the whole beer. And uh, you know, <laughs> that a boy. My first. one.
Now, Ryan, you, you mentioned, you know, playing in the band and everything earlier, you know, being a musician, you've been at it a long time. What's uh, what's going on musically these days? Are, are you still doing the Kill Moi thing? Uh, no, Kill Moi's over. Um, that was, uh, I lived in San Francisco for 15 years. I had two bands, well, not simultaneously, but two, at two different times. Uh, the first band, uh, when I first moved up there, was called Elephone. We made a bunch of records. And then uh, we kind of disbanded. And uh, then I created a new band with some other friends of mine, and uh, we called that Kill Moi. It kind of started as like a fun project for me because I kind of wanted to try something new, not new musically, but new musically for myself. Um, I'd always been like in these like sort of underground indie bands and, you know, very uh, maybe like ethereal sounding or like Radiohead-ish or something like that. But I really enjoy not just singer-songwriters in the sense of like a guy with a, an acoustic guitar, but like super songwriters like Billy Joel, Neil Diamond, Paul McCartney solo, you know, like just those guys, you know, mm-hmm. who can completely command a stage, who write a good tune, aren't like mopey and droopy, just like love the stage. So I said, I'm putting together this band and we're going to do Elvis Costello songs, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, not covers, but like, you know, we're going to use those elements of Elvis Costello, Paul McCartney, Billy Joel, Elton John, you know, really huge songwriters. And uh, we're going to have a four-piece horn section, you know, and we're going to have two guitars, bass, drums, maybe, you know, adding some keys in there, an organ or something, really like a big, huge band. And that's what we did. It turned out a little differently. It was still super indie rock <laughs> because we just couldn't get away from our roots. And I don't write, you know, as good as Elvis Costello. Well, I mean, so, who does, right? Um, yeah, I mean, forget about it. I mean, I've even tried to, like, copy him, like, notes for notes without covering, you know, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding or something and fail miserably. <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess this just shows me that, like, I'm just me. And I have to just write from the heart, which I've always done in the past anyway. I can't just pretend like I'm someone else. So what, so what happened was it turned out that it was me, you know, doing my thing and everyone else doing their thing with all of those elements in mind. So it was a very interesting project. You know, we were, we, we played for a while. So different members left and came back and, you know, we got new people and, you know, it was just, and then it was just kind of time. It was just kind of time to, call it quits. Um, I got, I personally got the acting bug again. So I was doing some theater in San Francisco and I was doing some sh- independent uh, short films in San Francisco. And then I just super got the bug again. Like, I'm like, I think this is where I'm meant to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I miss it. I would watch TV shows and go, God damn it. <laughs> like, that's me. I should, I, I should be doing that. So packed everything up. And after 15 years, I uh, moved back to Los Angeles. And that's where I'm at right now. And as far as music is concerned, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pacing my apartment right now. I, and as I'm talking, I'm passing my, like, 67 Fender Mustang uh, competition series. It's a beautiful guitar. I got my acoustic Fender. I got a left-handed Dan Electro, you know, which is a beautiful guitar from Sears. You know, I, they're always present in my life. And I don't think there's a day goes by where I'm not sitting on my couch watching a film without noodling on my guitars. and So I'm still writing, but I'm not playing out. I don't have a band right now. And uh, I'm just concentrating on these projects that I'm working on with uh, Andre Gower, the podcast, um, a TV show that I wrote, a uh, TV show he wrote, and then we have a few other projects in the works as well. So that's kind of what I'm concentrating on right now. And, you know, going out and auditioning for various roles here and there. So. Well, I mean, some people don't understand. I get crap for this a lot in town, um, you know, because I played for so long, and that was kind of what I got known for. And then I started doing the podcast yeah, thing, play, you know. You played you play in bands. In bands, you played yeah, in bands. Yeah, and I also, like, I toured yeah. a lot as a solo artist and whatnot as well. Had some label interest, but, it, you know, it never panned out. And 
I wanted to do something else, you know. It's like I got my first band at 13, and, uh, you know, I was pretty much touring, you know, but 17, 18, you know, something like that. So that lasted until I was about 29, and then I started this show, and people are like, oh, you should still be playing, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I never, you know, I didn't say it was forever, but, you know, sometimes you just want to do something different creatively, and podcasting is creative, acting's creative, you know. Sometimes you're just feeling like a different flavor of ice cream, you know? Yep, totally understand. I mean, sometimes it's just like, you know, I still have passion for you. I still love, you know, coffee, ice cream, but I really just want some cookies and cream right now. And I just need to concentrate on that. And, uh, you know, I've always been a guy that's kind of had various projects going here and there. But, you know, I, I'm also a guy that just likes to focus on, like, a specific thing and just kind of go for that. So everyone, everyone's always there. You know, I've got tons of friends and family that are just like, we want more music. I'm like, yeah, how about a movie? How about a movie? <laughs> <laughs> or how about this TV show I'm trying to write? Would you watch that if I did that? Would that appease your, you know, whatever? Because, you know, that's what I'm working on now. That's what I'm passionate about. You want me to make some wonky record that I don't give a shit about? And then eh, you probably will listen to it once and then I spend all that time doing it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Nailed it! Being that you're a musician and everything, I'm sure you're listening to lots of stuff. I'm always looking to turn my listeners on to some new music, so who's uh, who's caught your ear lately? Oh, man. Loaded question. I don't know. Um, let's <laughs> say If you're talking about someone like in the newish vein, I love Courtney Barnett. She's my favorite right now. She's a fucking genius. Um, Angel Olsen is also a genius. I like Lucius is great. They're kind of the... Uh, an exciting new act. Um, although they're getting kind of big, so people might have heard of them uh, by now. Um, but I've been listening to them for a while. Man, I, do, I, listen to, I still listen to like my favorite shit. I still listen to like Blur. Um, I still love Blur and uh, Elvis Costello, of course. I, you know, Talking Heads. I listen to a lot of like old punk stuff from the '80s, like LA punk. Black Flag, Circle Jerks, TSOL, uh, all that good stuff. What else am I listening to? What's new? I mean, I still listen to Sonic Youth, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, old, I'm old, man. You know, some of these newbie bands, I'm like, you know, I, I, I can't get with. I still, I mean, I'm listening to Wilco. Like, tastes are so all over the map, you know? Like I said, I'm still listening to, like, Billy Joel and, and Bruce Springsteen albums, but then I'll, like, put on some punk shit or I'll listen to, like, Patsy Klein or something. You know, like, I really don't have those sort of boundaries when it comes to music. Especially being a musician, it's kind of hard to, like, say, yeah, I just play this one genre of music. It's like, uh, no, like, I will listen to Depeche Mode and then put on Dolly Parton, you know? Mm -hmm. Or, like, I'm listening to, like, The Dubliners and then I want to hear Ice Cube. Or, like, I'm listening to, like, the Halloween soundtrack and then right after that, John Cougar Mellencamp. Scarecrow comes on, you know, <laughs> or like Lati like Latigre, and then I want to hear Leon Redbone, and then after that, there's Mozart or old ninety sevens, and then maybe some Pogues, and then REM, and then Thelonious Monk. Like I don't know, you know, some people like, you know, they're heavy metal, and like that's all they fucking listen to. And then you, God forbid you put on, uh, you know, a Paul McCartney record, they're like, this guy's a fag. You're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you have no idea. There wouldn't be heavy metal if Paul McCartney. If there was no Helder Skelter, why don't we do it in the road? You would never have Black Sabbath. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's just like, it's so mind-blowing to me that people don't understand the history of even rock and roll. It just doesn't even go back that far. But yeah. Like, if you go back further with the blues and, like, where did the blues come from and where did jazz come from and all that stuff, like, you know, it's just, people are just so close-minded sometimes it blows my mind. So, you know, if I was to give any, like, sort of, not advice, but if you want me to, like, give you the music that I listen to, I, my, my advice to you would be, just go find shit that you never would ever listen to. And don't give it one listen. Fuck it. If you've never heard Justin Bieber before, and believe me, I've heard Justin Bieber, like, it's playing, you know, everywhere you go. Just listen to it a few times. Maybe one of the tracks would be like, this fucking shit is good. There are some Britney Spears tracks that I, would tra I wouldn't trade for the world on my playlist. You know what I mean? This is oh, some of those are really well-written songs. It's a great song. I love it. Katy Perry. Awesome. Lady Gaga. Eh, not so much. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, or something, you know, like these are these are these are good good artists. They're good tracks, you know. Do I like Maroon Five? No, but I know that they're good musicians, and I'm sure that people enjoy that music, and that's great for them. So you know, it's whatever whatever you like. Just don't be closed minded. Just keep your mind open. 
to every, you know, little nook and cranny that you can get your hands on. That's how we make the world work. You know, that's how we all come together. If we all sort of enjoy separate things and the same things at the same time, you know, that's what makes it beautiful. Let me introduce you to this and I will introduce you to that. And keep an open mind. You know, always be confused is what the, the writer George Saunders says. I'm paraphrasing, but he says, always, always be confused. Keep an open mind. Don't let things pass you by. That's what you sense on music. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, I, f- I feel the same way, and I, I spend music on this show, so, you know, I, I definitely try to turn people on to some new stuff, but, I mean, I find myself, because I get so much music sent into the show, I mean, the new stuff is, is pretty well covered for me. I, I tend to find, like, you know, if I've got 10 minutes of free time, I'll go back and, you know, I'll I'll throw on, like, you know, the other night I was listening to uh, Iggy and the Stooges' Raw Power that I just, you know, I hadn't listened to that record in so long, or Smashing Pumpkins' Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, and, you know, or I might throw on Tchaikovsky or something, but I'll throw on something familiar or something that I haven't heard in a long time, or I'll just go flat out and try to find something like, oh, wait, I never did hear that album by so-and-so. I have all their other ones, but I never did check out that record, so it's like, I'll go try to find that one album and... And then, yeah, sort of like you were saying, you know, some people, they listen to stuff once and then they go, oh, well, I fucking hate it. But some of those albums yeah. are like my favorite albums now. They grew on me. Yeah, I'll tell you a story. They, uh, we, I, was, I was having a meeting the other day at, a, at like a kind of a hipster diner here in, in Hollywood. And they have a jukebox. Sometimes it just randomly plays stuff because no one's dropping quarters in or whatever. But uh, we were sitting there and, you know, music, it's, it's not loud, loud, but it's louder than your normal diner. Right. You know what I mean? It's because it's kind of a cool place to go and, like, there's great music playing. But you know when, like, if you just play a random track off of an album and, like, it's not one of the hits or it's just not, maybe it's, like, the last track on the album is just fucking noise <laughs> or something from a band. Like, so this is what happened at, at this diner. We're sitting there, we're having this meeting, and the song is playing. And I know what it is, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, like, call it out or anything because it gives a shit about my knowledge of music. <laughs> it's like the end of Nirvana Nevermind or whatever. Exactly. It was just feedback and just like fucking power chords. It was crazy. And the guy finally, he broke down and he said, what? I'm okay, okay. I can't concentrate. What the fuck is this shit? What are they playing in this diner? And I said, it's the Stooges. It's fun now. <laughs> and he was like, Absolutely. Brian, what do you got coming up for conventions? March 17th, we're going to, uh, we're going to be in Cincinnati at Horror Hound. So we'll all be there. There's, usually it's just me and Andre and maybe Ashley Banks. This uh, round, I think um, Duncan right here is going to be there. Dracula. Tom Noonan is going to be there. I think the guy that played the Wolfman is going to be there. Not John Grease, but the guy who uh, was in, actually in the costume. Uh, he's going to be there. I think that's it. Maybe a few of the or something, but um, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, then we go to Orlando at the end of April for uh, Spooky Empire. I think that's just me and Andre, so we'll be there for three days uh, in Orlando. Uh, and I, so there's a few other things I, I, I we haven't really signed contracts for, so I don't know if I'm allowed to like say it or anything. But yeah, we're going to be touring most of this year because it is a thir- it is an anniversary year for the Monster Squad. So you know. We want to get out there and uh, greet everybody and say hi for the 30th anniversary. Oh, my God, I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> Congrats on that, man. Thank you. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thunk it? I made it so far. I'm still, uh, I'm still, man. I'm still here, man. <laughs> uh, still kicking. Yeah, you know, we enjoy that because it's something that sort of hit us randomly, like, at a weird time in our lives. Like, Andre and I weren't even speaking. Like, we didn't, we haven't hadn't been in contact for a really long time. Uh, Eric Vespi in 
Austin, Texas, put together this screening at the Alamo Draft House, and uh, we all came together, and we were like, what the hell is this? Like, they're going to show the movie? That's stupid. <laughs> like, there's going to be like four people there. There's going to be like four people watching this movie. Like, I'm embarrassed, but fuck it. Free trip to Texas, great, let's go. We show up. I got to say hi to people I haven't seen in years, and we walked in. Two sold-out shows. We were like, what the fuck? And we wound up talking to people afterwards like, no, you don't understand, this is my favorite movie. I'm like, when? <laughs> <laughs> like, this movie came out, like, we, it was gone in my life. Like, came out, it bombed, and that was it. I moved on. I had absolutely no clue that people were actually still watching this thing throughout the years on VHS and did not know it had a whole different underground life. And it's still kind of new to us, you know? So... I mean, that was in 2007 or something, something like that. So it's only been, you know, 10 years or so that we've been doing these conventions and still we go out there and people are, you know, they're just the nicest people. And I, I never experienced anything like it. And I, I, you know, I, I do it for them or else I would just stay home and write, just, you know, in my underwear eating Cheetos, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but I get out there for them. 